Welcome back guys. This is my uh, CPS2 board here. This is the Capcom CPS2 arcade board. Uh, that's the drill bits that I've got there uh, because I'm about to uh, open up this uh, arcade game board. Now uh, this is obviously the uh, B board um, which is the game board. The A board which you need to play these games is the uh, motherboard which I've featured in previous videos. Here I'm taking this drill, uh, taking one of the drill bits that I just showed you and I'm trying to open this uh, game cartridge. So to open this you get an original one which this was from eBay. Uh, it will have these Capcom security bolts through which are a complete bastard to remove as you can see here. So you have to drill through it to actually break the security bolt. There it is there, just uh, turning it with a pair of pliers just to uh, try to get this off. You can see all the stickers there on this CPS2 uh, board. This is Super Street Fighter 2, which I've featured on my channel before. I generally like to leave all of the, um, obviously the, the game label on there, but uh, also like to leave the uh, any stickers on there as part of the history of the board. I'm getting this bolt off. There we go. As you can see, the big C on the top tells us it's the Capcom security bolt. These were put on by Capcom, the nice people at Capcom, so uh, to prevent us from opening these. So you wanted to get in and perform maintenance and alter the game board or whatever, or remove the battery, which is what we're doing in this case. You'd have to send it off to Capcom. Uh, they would replace the battery for you and charge you a nice fee for doing that. So what I'm showing you here is the uh, security uh, screw bit to get these other security screws off or bolts. Fortunately, you don't have to drill these, but uh, you do have to use this uh, the correct uh, screwdriver bit to get these off. I fortunately had one in my uh, toolkit, so just using this, getting these bolts off. In this house uh, where I'm actually doing this, uh, didn't uh, wasn't fortunate enough to have a workbench or anything, so I'm carrying this out on the floor in the lounge, front lounge. Uh, it's the old crappy rug in the centre there. It's, uh, it's a wooden floor, so uh, I'm actually performing this on a carpet or on the rug, uh, just in case. Uh, unwanted uh, static electricity it will destroy the arcade PCB and ROMs. There we go, uh, so I've got those uh, bolts out. Uh, carefully take the top off and there you can see there's a cable attached. Now this is for the, I believe it's the um, counter And I like to preserve this, so uh, I'm going to carefully disconnect this jumper cable. I have seen boards before, and actually I do own um, a CPS2 board. I believe it's X-Men vs. Street Fighter in my collection. And it didn't have this. This had already been removed, this little clock counter thing, um, or credit counter. And, uh, yeah, this one had it. So I'm just going to have a look inside the, uh, the case there. We have the PCB circuit board. So there's two boards there, one sitting on top of the other. There's all the ROM chips. Let's have a quick look at that. The traces on the board. I don't know too much about this stuff, to be honest with you. And uh, I can't actually believe that I'm attempting this battery removal. So there's the culprit, the red battery. 
Uh, there's the underneath of the PCB board. Uh, you can see all the traces and the solder points where the ROM chips, various chips are soldered to the RK PCB. Showing you that. It's in fairly good condition, this board. Uh, you can see there as well Capcom 936468 4. That's the revision number, which is quite relevant to what we're going to do. So there's the battery. Uh, I want to remove that. Generally, on these old boards, I do remove these batteries um, because in the good old days, they weren't the modern day. Um, battery coin cell holders where you could easily get into them and uh, there's my soldering iron there where you could easily get into them and change the battery when it died they were soldered onto the the PCB boards so I'm just going to uh, heat that up and try to pull that out generally I apply because these solder points on these boards are years and years and years old 20 plus years they come a bit become a bit dry and you can't get them off so generally i usually apply a new bit of uh, solder onto it so i heat a bit of solder up and uh, apply that to the current solder points and then um, and then heat it up again and uh, it enables you to remove the component in this case the battery from the board which I did there I just showed you that so that is removed and this is the device that we are installing now this isn't another battery you can if you want to keep this battery um, or this arcade PCB as As original as possible some people just remove the old battery put a new one in and then put a sticker on there to say when the battery was changed so in another five ten years just change it again uh, I went for this method so this method is um, the preferred method these days it's called the Infinikey and it's a little PCB board um, developed by a clever bunch of guys and uh, as you can see, I'm just attaching this to the PCB. This does require soldering. Um, I'm a complete beginner, a complete idiot when it comes to these sort of things. So I'm making this video and uploading it to my channel just to show you guys that if an idiot like me can do this, then you can certainly do it as well. Um, now this is a revision four board, so you've got to, um, install this Infinikey this way. If it was uh, one of the other revisions, um, which it says on the Infinikey, which I pointed out at the beginning anyway, um, then you'd, you'd have to install this a different way. But uh, the clever guys that have developed this have got video tutorials uh, on YouTube, and that's what I use basically. Um, in fact, this is one of the more difficult ones to install, the Revision 4. Revision 3 is exactly the same. There's the old battery there. But, um, yeah, you had to get power um, from, the, uh, from the actual board, um, plus 5, and also ground. So that is why I sold it on the red and the, uh, and the black wire, which I'll zoom in on. In a second so I try to focus so there's basically four solder points there that I had to solder this uh, Infinikey onto the board and you can see there it will focus so there I'm pointing to it with a uh, old cable tie <laughs> see if it focus so yeah, um, that's the best I could do. It was a real crap cheap soldering iron. I'm not making excuses, I'm crap at soldering anyway. I've got this old cheap soldering iron that came with this set of other tools, so it wasn't one I bought separately. So I soldered them on, uh, and there's the ground wire. So I just used a black wire that I um, had in an old electronics kit. So no special wires here.
So there again, I'm using a big biro now to try to focus. There's the four solder points. There's the ground cable. So it just goes on that point there on the Infinity. I've soldered the other end over, just over onto that point there. And then the red wire is the uh, plus five volts. So again, I've attached that to the relevant section. It says there five volts on the Infinity. And then I've attached it to that section there to give it the five volts. There probably are other sections on the board, but again, I just followed a uh, video on YouTube. I believe it's from the guys that developed this, so I will put um, the link to that video uh, in the description of my video. Right, okay, so here we have So here we have the list. Uh, I believe I got sent this through with the Infinity. So um, number one column is the ROM label. Two is the game select key. Uh, that correlates to the uh, jumpers on the board, which I just showed you. There you go. Um, and then the third one is the um, just the name of the ROM. So for example, Super Street Fighter 2. And there I've uh, circled it in the red biro. So that tells you what jumpers you need to leave open and what you need to close. And we can see, you can just about see on those stickers, on the ROM chips. You should be able to see the, very faintly, uh, have the code there. And that actually matches that there. So there we go. So that was the one zero zero one one zero zero one. One means you just put a bit of solder on that uh, on that jumper, and then that's the right code for that uh, game, there you go. Now what this actually does guys, is it enables you to use these boards, there we go, I'm just putting everything back in the case, enables you to use these boards without the, um, without having the battery installed. So, you know, I could have replaced the battery, then I would have had to mark it up and then would have had to do this again in another five, 10, maybe 15 or 20 years or whatever. I didn't want the hassle. Um, install this Infinity, and the reason is because if these boards don't have the battery or the Infinity, uh, the actual game ROM loses the uh, decryption keys, so it will no longer function. Um, and this is where the term suicide battery uh, was coined by those nice guys at Capcom. So, um, yeah, you basically couldn't play the game, it was just a dead board. Uh, just showing you the labels on there. So installing this Infinity just means that the uh, game keeps its uh, decryption keys and you can still play the game. Here you can see, all booted up nicely in my uh, Sega Astro City arcade cabinet. Love this machine.
just having a quick go here using uh, Ryan and get my arse handed to me by Zangief. Uh, he's, a, he's a bastard, but uh, I'm not the best at playing these games, guys, but uh, I really enjoy playing them. I do. Nothing beats the original games or the original hardware and playing on an authentic arcade machine. I just absolutely love it. I know these games can can be emulated and everything else and they're quite accurate, but um, nothing beats this in my opinion. My X-Men vs Street Fighter board I bought from the same seller and both of these boards were meant to be untouched and genuine and everything else and it took me a while before I even got around to opening them up and the security bolt that you saw me remove from uh, this board there wasn't one on the X-Men vs Street Fighter anyway I opened it up obviously it was a lot easier to open up because I didn't have to drill through it and uh, it didn't even have the battery on board so that board had act and it didn't have the infinity installed so it was what's known as phoenixed which means that it contained um, non-original uh, rom chips to um, to basically enable the game to play so i was a bit pissed off about that but i didn't make a complaint about it because the game still plays okay and everything else but you know, I would have preferred to have the um, all the original chips and just install the Infinity, which I would have tried myself. Um, incidentally, I have picked up another board uh, since I these to, which I am going to feature on my channel very shortly. And um, I've noticed the sellers now actually offer you the option that you can keep the board as original, um, unopened, untouched with the original battery installed, or just got beaten by, uh, or did I win that one? No, I won that one. So the final round against Edmund Honda. But um, yeah, so you can keep the, um, the boards intact or the seller offers to um, install the Infinity for you. So I thought, well, that saves me a job. So on the latest board I got, I, I actually asked him if he would uh, install the Infinity for me, he did, and the board works fantastic. So, don't have to worry about these batteries. It's always a good idea to remove these batteries anyway, these old arcade boards, because the last thing you want is you know, for them to leak, die, and leak, uh, and you have nasty battery acid just destroying your board, uh, the, uh, the PCB traces, and things like that, which can take ages to repair. Um, in my case, I wouldn't be able to repair them, so I just have to sell them as parts. But uh, there you go, I got beaten again. So it's just showing you um, spin around. Just showing you that this board actually works with the Infinity. I'm really happy about it. I was really nervous doing this install because like I say, that the easiest option would have been just to put a battery, a uh, replacement battery in there. Um, but I thought, as I've got it open, I may as well just just attempt this Infinity install. It wasn't too bad, to be honest with you. There was just a total of um, eight solder points, so with the two wires. So that's not too bad. And if an idiot like me can do it, guys, um, you can also do this. So yeah, just thought I'd show you this. I hope to feature more CPS2 um, hardware on my channel in the future and cheers for watching guys.